So I wanna briefly discuss the difference between hosted and unhosted loads and what that really means functionally for how it applies to uh, structural engineering Revit users. And then we'll go ahead and look at how those loads are applied. And once those loads are applied, it'll give us an opportunity to observe and kind of demonstrate the functional difference between how hosted and unhosted loads behave in a Revit model. So fundamentally, if we go up and look at our Analyze tab, we'll notice that we have point loads, line loads, and area loads of each type. They're applied in a, a slightly different manner, and I'm gonna start with um, hosted point loads and hosted line loads in terms of applying those. The functional difference being that a hosted load is actually a property of the analytical element that it's placed on. And what that means is that if you place a hosted load on a beam and then you move the beam or change its geometry in some way, the load is going to adapt to the properties of the beam. And this also makes hosted loads a lot easier and straightforward to place. So the first thing to note when placing a load is that you can use the preferences or sorry, the properties menu over here on the left hand side of the screen to set things like the load case of the load, the magnitude, and whether it's uniform or non-uniform. If you check non-uniform, then it's going to give you the option to provide a second set of magnitudes. So these would be start and ending magnitude, whereas if you check uniform, you only provide one magnitude. And in most cases, if you're talking about gravity loading, you're going to be focused on the Z component of this force rather than the X and the Y. Now the way this load is placed, once you've set the properties, is you simply hover over analytical beam and you can see the analytical element lights up and allows you to place. Now, if your analytical model categories are not visible, you won't be able to see the analytical element to place the load. You'll notice here with those visibilities turned off, I hover over this and I don't have the option to place it. But if I come and I reactivate visibility, I can simply mouse over that element place the load. Once the load is placed, you'll notice it has the exact same extents as the beam that it was attached to. And in the same way, if I place a hosted point load, now a hosted point load can only be placed at the start or end of a member. It can't be placed at an arbitrary location along the length of the member. So if I take a hosted point load and place it here, now that both of these are hosted, you'll notice that if I change the extents of the beam by dragging the endpoint, both of those loads automatically move with the endpoint of the beam. The reason being because they are hosted to the underlying analytical element. Now, conversely, if I were to go to this beam and I want to place a non-hosted load, there's some additional geometry control that's necessary to place a non-hosted load because it can't snap to the analytical element because that's not how it's being placed. So for example, if you were to go to a plan view and you want to place a load, the first thing that you're going to need is you're going to need a level to associate the view to so that it knows, pardon me, to associate the load to so that it knows where to place the elevation of the load. And then you'll simply draw the sketch by pointing and clicking. Now this load is found at the elevation that I specified when creating it. However, if I were to take this beam and shift the beam, you'll notice that the unhosted load stays exactly where it was originally created in 3D space. If we wanted this load to move with the beam, we would have to drag it or move it in some other way. That's the fundamental difference between hosted loads and unhosted loads.